Hey everybody, welcome to week number three of our All In Groups. I hope it's been a great journey for you so far. Today, we're talking about the importance of what you prioritize and how that plays into your total devotion. But before we do, check out this story. So in September, I found myself in a situation out here in Philly that I did not expect to be in. And um, a lot of people would have thought it was impossible for me to get through. But God showed up in the most miraculous way. Like I, if you, if I told you, you wouldn't even believe me. Like it's just, it's incredible the way he shows up when you absolutely need him to. I'm on the events team and I was asked to help serve at one of the influencer gatherings. And it was early November and um, I had just ended a long-term relationship and I was extremely emotional going through my personal stuff and um, Kent asked a question like where were think of a time six months when you were really close to God and think of where you are now and that really hit me when I was standing there listening to that and um, that would have been high school for me like that was high school that was a long time ago he then read the verses in Revelation um, that were written to the church. But at that moment, it was like they were written just for me. You've gone and done your own thing, and um, you found them not to be true. Like, just all the words were just, specifically, they were written for me. And he says, it's time to come back to your first love. It's time to come home. And it was just an emotional <laughs> breakdown for me. It was exactly what I needed. Uh, it was, um, it was life-changing. It was exactly what I needed in that moment. With everything I was going through in my personal life, I needed to hear that. So for me, what after I heard that, and, and kind of around the same time, it was just like, you know what, God, I can't do this by myself anymore. I can't do this. I give you everything, emotional, mental, financial, spirit, everything. It just lay it all down at your feet. Um, and now that I'm hearing the message again, because I was at a, a couple of them serving, and for me this time it was financial. Like, how can I, how can I continue to give, but how can I give better? Really, like that took that as a challenge. For me, I give what I can, but I also believe that generosity can be your time and helping other people. Um, so I'm a single mom, and I have friends who are single moms, and we help each other out even when we don't feel like it. There's been people in my lives who, who have been extremely generous givers, and I would see how happy that would make them. Um, open their home, get the cars, you know, to use. Like, just giving made them so happy, and I just, I just want to be in that place. So I have made the decision to be all in in every aspect of my life because I have tried to go my own way, and it does not work. Just take the leap. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. That's how I feel about it. Well, hey, what's up, Epic? Hey, we're here for week three of our All In Groups. We're gonna have a great discussion today, so let's lean in. Last week, we talked about how God changed Abram's name to Abraham as a part of reinforcing that he'd be faithful despite Abram's shortcomings in the past. This was a part of teaching Abraham that ultimately God is trustworthy to keep his promises toward him. And it's for us to learn that God will keep his promises toward us. We decided that our total devotion and full potential are connected to experiencing God as faithful. And that comes from courageously doing what God calls us to do. Today we're gonna to talk about things being a matter of our priorities. Genesis 13 describes how Abraham prioritized the ways of God and that contrasts with that of his nephew Lot and Lot's selfishness. To pursue God first and to give Him our best can be difficult to align. It's one thing to say that we believe that we're doing that and a whole nother thing to actually live that out. We might think that we're prioritizing God if right off the top of our paycheck we cut our gift for Him. And that's a great practice and it's a God-honoring sequence for your giving. But that doesn't necessarily reflect your priorities. For your giving to reflect a priority would mean you would actually Put your giving first prior to your other financial decisions, not the other way around. It's easy to let our lifestyle decisions to determine our giving to God. It's easy to let those decisions decide how we're going to live our lives and then give to God out of what we have left. But that's not what going all in and living totally devoted really means. 
They mean that first and foremost, what financial commitment do you want me to have over the next two years? That's the question we need to be asking God. And then adjust your lifestyle to accommodate what God is asking of you. God wants our all-in generosity to be transformational for us. And if your giving isn't changing you, if it's not a faith-building sacrifice, then your giving probably isn't where God would like for it to be. So let's think about that for a second. Even if you've been super faithful in your giving, it's missing part of the function that God wants it to have in your life if it is not setting your priorities. God establishes his plan for our giving early on in scripture. We're going to read about Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve. And we pick up in Genesis chapter 4. Now Abel kept the flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering to the Lord, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. You might have read this before, but not picked up on some of the important wording. Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord in the course of time. He didn't bring it as a first priority. He brought some of what he had when it seemed good to him. Now we contrast that with Abel. Abel gave the fat portions or the good parts from the firstborn of his flock. Abel brought God the best portions from his firstborn. And he gave his first and best to the Lord, trusting that God would provide. And we see that God was pleased in the way that Abel had prioritized his giving. It truly honored and demonstrated his trust. Now it's easy to think of all the reasons why we can't prioritize our giving to God. It's easy to let fear and other desires, good goals, careers, maybe even dictate our generosity. But Jesus told us where our treasure is, our heart will be also. And if our hearts are completely committed to God or totally devoted to God, then our finances will be too. Our all-in journey is not primarily about raising money. It's about an extremely healthy biblical practice called prioritizing. You could also call that commitment. You see this commitment card right here? This is a discipleship tool for us. It is a tool that should compel us to pray about truly putting God first and prioritizing Him above everything else that could compete with Him. This is going to mean something different for every person. For some of us, it'll mean that you'll put a number on this card that you would have never thought possible. And it might freak you out a little bit. But for all of us, God wants to change and shape our priorities and our hearts as we take a step of faith and obedience. So let's be praying together. God. What is making you the priority of my finances look like for me? And as you guys discuss in your groups, I want you to be honest about those tensions and those difficulties. When you think about your career, your goals, your desires, even your difficulties, be willing to process through those things together and trust that God is going to hear any difficulties you have and help you move toward becoming a person who can prioritize their giving and allow God to shape their hearts as they become the person God's called them to be.